Let's not keep him waiting any longer. Let's bring him in here. We got a lot to talk about. Ladies and gentlemen, Ezra Robinson joins Tour Life for the first time. Ezra, how's it going, brother? Hey, I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. Of course. Where are you at right now? Are you I'm, are you road tripping back? I am. We are going up to Seattle um, to Kayak Point for a GK Pro uh, weekend thing. Oh, nice. So, yeah. And, are you, and then are you starting to drive? Are you driving cross country? Ooh, yep, boy. to uh, the preserve. Yes. Any any plans to stop on the way? Like, what's the uh, what's the road trip look like? Um, I actually haven't mapped anything out yet. Um, I normally try to see something along the way, um, but I know it's like a twenty hour or something drive. So, are you a touristy trap kind of guy? Do you like to um, see like the biggest rocking trail in the world? No, not stuff like that. I like um, like national parks, state parks. I'll go see those more than okay. like, yeah. So. All right, first thing, we've obviously have had your brother on the show, but I don't think we even discussed this. Set the record straight. Which one is older, Ezra or Isaac? Because people Isaac's, get confused about this all the time. Yeah, Isaac's older by 18 months. Okay, so you're the younger brother. Because I think initially, mm -hmm. when you guys kind of popped up on coverage and everything, everyone was thinking that you were the older brother. Mm -hmm. Do you, does that happen a lot? Do people think that? Yeah, they do. Okay. Any any reason why you think that is? Um, probably because I just act a little older. Um, <laughs> no, I, I'm also married as well. Some people yeah. hear that they're like, "Oh, you know, he must be older." Isaac's, you know, just a bachelor living it up with the boys. So, maybe when did you, when, when did you get married? How how recently was that? Um, December fourth, twenty twenty one. Okay, wow. So you've been married for a decent amount. And how, how is that uh how is that dynamic with you touring now a lot more? Yeah, um, we're still figuring it out. Um it's uh it's been very interesting because I went from you know, just staying with the guys every week to uh, you know, us trying to get our own place. And um yeah, but um yeah, no, we're still figuring it out. But it's it's been a good it's been good, that's for sure. But uh yeah, just we normally just get our like host home or Airbnb or hotel um, for the week, and uh, my wife sets it all up beforehand, that's nice. um, so she handles all that. So that's very helpful. So yeah, that's awesome. All right, well let's let's jump into the disc golf side of things here, and let's let's get after it because you know I I don't know if you caught the beginning of the pod, but I basically threw out the line, and I think it's actually pretty factual. I think at this point in time, if we're looking at the best players to have not won on tour, I think your name is maybe the the top or maybe just right there. I think Aaron Gossage is probably in the mix. I think the other Ezra, Ezra Aderhold, is pros probably also up there. Um, but I think I think you're right there. And so I think the first question I have is, have you seen anything that you can pinpoint of like this is the thing that i gotta make sure i don't do or work on or fix for the next time i'm put in this position to win mm -hmm. um i think it was very clear after uh champions cup and uh ddo of what i struggled with the most and that was uh staying mentally there um and not just getting angry at myself for stupid mistakes and letting that ruin the rest of the round early um mm -hmm. So I think that's something big that I need to work on. And um, yeah, I'm continuing to work on that. So do you feel like, because we saw, I mean, we obviously saw at Champions Cup, like the frustration kind of coming down the stretch. Uh, but even on Hole 18, like I still was like, dude, if he throws the craziest shot I've ever seen on Hole 18, like you have a chance to eagle and then who knows what could happen. So you definitely didn't like shoot yourself out of it. But have you made that decision of like negative talk or being upset or like kicking your bag or whatever it is that you do? Do you think that negatively impacts your game? Um, yes and no. Sometimes I do like kick myself in the pants a little bit and, and get myself back on track. Um, but to the extent of what I'm doing where it's ruining the rest of my round or honestly, letting the competitors that I'm competing against see that I'm, you know, shaky um, is a huge thing to where, you know, if I was playing against somebody who was clearly cracking under pressure, 
I would be all the more confident and I don't want to give them any more confidence. So my goal is to be as calm as possible and steady as possible. Um, and that way I don't give them any, uh, you know, confidence from me being shaky, if that makes any sense. Yeah, no fur. And, and do you feel like in these instances that you have been close to winning, do you feel like you have like cracked under pressure? Is that how, is that what you would draw it up is, if you if you felt like you had if you didn't crack under pressure you would have won multiple times this year um multiple times no um i think champions cup is the really only one that um i had a shot and then i got upset early and i didn't finish very well um ddo i mean calvin was winning that right after like the first yeah. two holes so yeah um <laughs> but um beaver state um i i didn't I didn't crack under the pressure and I had my best finish yet. I knew that it was going to be a hard one to win. Um, but I, I did my goal of not, not cracking under the pressure and keeping a steady head the whole time. And I ran it down right to the wire. So I'm happy yeah. with that. Rewatching it. Cause I watched live and then I rewatched Jomez to just kind of see, you know, some different angles and whatnot and to see your round. There was really only one shot. If there's more, then please let me know. But there was really only one shot that I saw that jumped out at me. And it was very apparent too, because you had first off, I gotta ask, are you are you an absolute crusher now? Or like has that always been the case or what's going on here? I have no idea. I feel like it varies every tournament. Oh I've, really? Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes so you were throwing I, far this tournament though. Yeah, apparently. Yeah. No, it just Apparently, uh, like you you were bombing these <laughs> we were bombing these discs. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know where that came from. Okay. So no. that's not that's not you're just not you're okay. All right. Because I was gonna say, like yeah. do we need to be on like uh you know top five distance contest alert as no, a Robinson? I, I've never felt that I throw that far. Um in tournaments, it just seems a little different. I can pump some out there. Um in practice I wasn't getting that far, but I don't know. So. You're juiced. You yeah, were I guess juiced. so. <laughs> you were the, the drive on, uh, and this is the hole I'm talking about. The drive on hole eleven yep. was was insane. Yeah. Um, so, but that the second shot, that was the first time that I saw you were the last to go. All three people on your card, all through four hands, all got either you know Calvin, I think was just a step out side a circle, but the other two basically parked it, and mm -hmm. then you came up and tried to throw the backhand, which was the much more challenging shot in the mm. in the thing that was really the only time i saw a shot where i was like ah i don't really know if that was that great and was there anything oh. anything else that round that really jumps out at you is like man that wasn't a great shot um because you did play pretty solid i felt like i felt like i did um maybe that uh third shot on hold two that trickled out of bounds um kind of released it early yeah. Um, and again, like I didn't even know it was out of bounds until I got up there. But um that that one sucked. And then yeah, hole eleven. Um the uh I was on a tiny bit of a slope. Um, so it kind of got in my head just a little bit on my when I was just planting. Oh your foot um, okay. Yeah, and then I kind of yanked it over a little bit. But uh yeah, I think those are the only two shots that I can really really be upset with. I mean, I missed a couple circle two putts, but everybody does that, so what about sure. like when in the rounds leading up to these these final round moments are you do you find yourself getting frustrated or are you in a different kind of zone because you know there's no cameras there's usually some people watching obviously your household name but what are those rounds like compared obviously the pressure is way different but can right. you pinpoint like what's getting you kind of fired up yeah like are you saying like if I get upset during those rounds? Yeah, like what, like or well, yeah. or do you not? Like you said, sometimes you hit yourself and it and it can be a good thing. Like I think we've all gone through that. But what's yeah. going on in those rounds that is getting you um, in position? Yeah, no, I mean there's a lot less pressure, like you said, um, and it's. I mean, uh, yeah, I mean I think that has a not knowing that I'm you know have a chance to win or anything like that. That's not in my head at all. Um, the only thing that would really get me upset during one of those rounds is if I'm just missing circle one putts um, or not getting clean off the tee, which I'd normally do. Um, so like if, if it's, I don't really have any mental problems during those rounds. Um, so yeah. 
let's let's jump a little bit ahead and just tell me walking up to the green on hole 18 you know you have to make the putt mm -hmm. that is you know you know when we're all growing up and stuff whether it's basketball football whatever it is we all visualize that moment right of like i've got a putt in this instance it was a putt to push it to a playoff but still mm -hmm. it's the same notion like what what are you did you feel like you were ready for that moment because it did look like after you after you putted like you were kind of disappointed with your your attempt like yeah walk walk me through that um yeah so i have uh i've actually switched up my putt um the last two weeks um and so i've been a lot more confident on the putting green and um i didn't hit a ton of circle twos all weekend but i was hitting a lot of basket and getting really close um and i knew i walked up and i was like i mean it's basically like a 50 50 it's gonna if it goes in it goes in if not then you know you know, can't really be upset about missing a 61 footer, um, to tie, but, um, yeah, I just wanted to give it a good bid and I was disappointed with my bet. It had no chance. It was so far. Right. Um, and it kind of, yeah, I kind of putted before it could really hit me on what the putt was actually for oh. kind of, okay. um, which could have helped or could not have helped. Cause you're kind of getting ice there too. Was Gannon like trying to get out of the tree? You kind of stood by your. Yeah, he took forever. Yeah, you kind yeah. of stood by your. Like you were right. Like for those that don't know, Isaac, Ezra, two of the faster players on tour. Luke Humphreys also shout out a very fast player as well. So it looked like you were ready to go. Did that have any impact at all, or not really? Um, not really. I mean, I'm used to. I, I was trying. It was basically the same as the whole round, where like I would be ready to putt, and then they'd be moving out of the way. Like I'm, I'm used to that, so that didn't really bother me much. Crumb. Yeah, because I, I saw I saw that and I was trying to figure out the camera didn't pan or anything, so we didn't get to see. But I assumed it was probably Gannon trying to get out of the tree, which is you know understandable. Philo as was well. giving him crud on the oh, live. Oh, he wanted to, he wanted you guys to <laughs> stroke Gannon. He was he was like this is crap. Like somebody needs to call him on thirty seconds. He's like he was like he's like I I get it. Like the moment and it, he kind of contradicted himself because. Yeah. He basically was like, I get it. It's a big moment. You want to take your time, but someone's got to stroke this guy. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, no, those are the times where you should you be taking more time. Like yeah. that's, we're all bought in on that. Um, oh, yeah. I could have easily won if we were playing the uh, time by like, <laughs> uh, in the last three holes. I would have been ahead by two. Well, I mean, you guys, I think you guys were like two holes or something like that behind the group in front of you. And granted, mm -hmm. you did, you did start with a decent gap or so. Um, all right, let's go back a little bit. The the only other shot that that I kind of circled where I was kind of like, huh, was that what he was going for? Your, I believe it was your third shot on hole seventeen. No chance to get to the green there. Um, did I have a chance? You're, well, like no, like did I ever like cross your mind of like should I go for this or not? Yeah, um, it did. And um, I was going to go a backhand layup. I don't know if the live caught it, but I switched a couple times. Um, and then there was a forehand gap, and I, like, I'm like i not even comfortable with throwing a forehand yet on hole 11's up shot. And so I was like, okay, you know, I mean, this is kind of it, and there's a lot of pressure on that shot. And I, I went for it, um, but just let it go way too early, and it hit the branch and dropped safe. So I was like, okay, I mean. Oh, maybe, so you were, oh, wow. Uh, so you were to, going yeah. for it. Mm-hmm. Did you know that, Yuli? I did not. No, the coverage, bad, bad. the coverage, <laughs> and everything made it seem like you were laying up. Yeah, yeah. No, oh, I uh, snap. You said if you're I not trying that, to give your competitors that. any uh, information. I don't know if we. <laughs> I think that's one that we fold and keep under the deck right there. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah. Wow. No, it was okay. not my best attempt. Um, I had a wide open. Uh, it's not wide open, but it was a touchy forehand for me. Um, sure. So I was like, I got to go for it, though, and then just left it inside. If I had hit the gap, it would have been fine. Um, Where are you as far as, like, your confidence level to the field? Like, you see Gannon playing so good. You see Calvin playing so good. You're in the mix, it seems like, every single weekend. Where are you, like, your confidence level of where you feel like you rank right now in the world? Do you think that you're close to making that hump and being and being the guy? 
Or are you still looking at these guys and being like, okay, I need to improve. I need to make this better before that happens. Yeah. Um, I think it's a little different. I view a couple people a little differently. Um, Calvin, I grew up watching. Um, so it's like, oh my gosh, it's, you know, Calvin Heinberg, you know, like, you know, kind of still that kind of aspect of it. And I'm like, wow, I'm lucky to be even competing with him because like, he's that good. Um, Gannon, um, him being a younger guy who I've been playing just as much or if not longer than him. Um, it's more of like, okay, it's not, not that big of a deal. And I think I can, uh, I've played enough practice rounds with him and hung out with him enough to be comfortable around him and know that I can beat him. Um, but like, I mean, same thing with Ricky. Like I grew up watching him and like all these greats of the game that like have inspired me so much are kind of still a little nerve wracking to, you know, go up against, but, uh, Yeah. What uh what was said between you and Isaac at the uh in there? We saw we saw you guys kind of get embraced a little bit. He said, "Sorry, man," and I said, "Yeah." <laughs> that's wow. <laughs> that's how it. uh how quick, like how quick of a, how long do you give yourself to kind of be bummed out? Um. I was, I mean, it's still, there's, I mean, it's so hard to not look back on the whole weekend and find that one shot that I missed. Um, so, I, I mean, I was bummed out pretty much the rest of the day. Um, and, yeah, Monday, Monday, I was like, okay, yeah, you know, I could have done this, done that, but I'm, I'm fine now. I mean, I, I think you got to get over that pretty quick and take the victories that you have and uh, focus on that. Um do you do anything? Uh, is there anything that you do outside of disc golf to kind of help you reset a little bit? Um, yeah, I'll go, I'll go to the gym a lot and, uh, just that kind of, you know, get some mental stress out of the way, just doing some physical workout or something just keeps my mind off of it. And, you know, kind of just kind of resets it for the week. Um, and I'll, I'll hang out with Alden and Isaac. We'll go play like a fun disc golf round or um just play games or whatever Ste steven in our chat says he's parked outside a bar <laughs> <laughs> um yeah the, the crazy thing with your and I, I get what you're saying like ddo calvin was like an absolute robot so i don't know if anyone's beating him there but the thing that's so crazy with like an individual sport like disc golf is it is so hard to win and literally, like you said, like a shot here, a putt here, and all of a sudden you have a major championship under your belt and a, a win on the tour. And now you are probably, in this instance, you probably are like the front runner for player of the year, right? Like you're up there as being talked about. So do you feel like you just need to get over the hump? You just need to somehow figure out a way to win and then once you do that, then after that, it'll come easier for you. Um, I think it's. I don't think it's a hump. I think it's just a learning process. I think it's a steady hill that I'm climbing, and I'll get the top. Okay. Of. Um, I like that. I, yeah, I don't think. Um, I think Beaver State really proved to myself. I don't know if it proved to other people, but like, I can perform under pressure, and I can, I can, I can win. I can win. Even though I didn't win, I can win. I did. I was in the hunt the whole time. Um, and I just needed one of those tournaments to where um, I just needed to learn that. And, you know, this, it actually means probably the, uh, I learned about as much as I could, even if I won, you know, mm. where I was able to stay behind the whole time. I was never in the lead. I didn't have the only thing I didn't learn was how to control the lead, which you know, I'm sure is different, but I am, I learned a lot. And I think that's what it is. It's just a steady hill of learning. And uh, once I have a couple more of those tournaments, um, just like in contention, um, I think I'm going to get a win pretty soon. I am, I am looking forward to Des Moines. Um, nice. That's a good course for me. And I uh, got my first podium there last year. So I'm looking to, uh, to give it a go. What about, sure. what about like one thing I know that <clears throat> I think about, and I'm sure other people think about too, is 
is there extra pressure because your brother's been so successful in a short amount of time too, like multiple major champion elite series winner kind of out of nowhere came onto the scene. And as I remember when you guys were coming up, you were always the better of the two for a long time. Uh, I remember thinking, Oh yeah, well it's, it's Ezra. He's the better of the brothers. And I played with Isaac at the U S championship. And I remember thinking, oh, his brother's way better type <laughs> thing. And then it kind of flipped. And now we see it kind of leveling off and, and you're catching back up as far as all that goes. Like what kind of pressure is behind that? Because sibling rivalry is a real thing. Um, and he's had a lot of success. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Let's see. So he got out of college and just went straight on tour. Um, that was in 2021. I didn't, I wasn't doing a full tour, um, because I had just gotten married and I felt, I didn't even know if I was going to be touring. Um, I didn't know that disc golf would be my full-time job in 2022 or 2020. I mean, uh, sorry, uh, 2023 or 2024. Um, because what helps just, you, what helps you be able to make it full-time? Um, yeah, just committing to it. Um, I was oh, working okay. a, a full-time job, um, back home doing a uh, water treatment for big industrial companies. Um, and so I was kind of just half and half. I was given half of myself to disc golf, half of myself to my job. And it was just not getting anywhere with anything. And I was happy for Isaac because he went out and, you know, he, he, he didn't have anything keeping him back or anything. He didn't have anybody to really support. Um, he didn't have like a family to worry about, you know, just, I mean, you know, just different stages of life. Um, and once, you know, we did, me and my wife did commit to, uh, doing the full tour. Um, I had the pressure of, okay, I have to cash every single week or we're going home. Yeah. You know? Um, and then I started doing better. Um, and then had a good finish to last year. And so that gave me the confidence I needed. And Isaac's been doing it a year longer than I have. Um, and I'm super proud that he got all those wins. I mean, I was the first one there to congratulate him on every single one. Um, but no, I think, I think, being on this is my second full year on the road. I think I'm catching up. Um, I've passed them in rating ratings. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm getting to where I know I can be, but yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think it's clear that when you're, when you're playing well, that you have the chance to win. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what all of us strive for is just having the, the opportunity. And then when you put yourself in that opportunity, now it's like, okay, can you actually, uh you know get it done or not so um i know i know a lot of us are pulling for you too you're exciting to watch we we appreciate the fast play that is another thing i want to see more people on lead car that play quick um but uh before we let you go here we always ask people when they come on their pet peeves mm -hmm. and so new new guests the chat is probably going to be fired up here do you got any good pet peeves for us anything that that uh gets you gets you going um let's see um i wish i wish um the whole time violation stuff which i'm sure have been mentioned before and all that but like you have marshals on some cards timing and then like stroking people and everything but on the lead card like we said gannon took so much time and there was marshals there but they didn't want to call it or anything because of the situation it if it's going to be a rule it has to be in every situation hmm. like you can't just pick and choose oh we'll do it the first round of the tournament but not the last day on the last card you know it's, it's got to be consistent and i think you know you never know when like you <laughs> i'm trying to figure out what i'm trying to say but like if i took a lot of time i won't know if i'm getting gonna get stroke for it or I'm not. It mm. should be a consistent thing. And, you know, I don't know. Well, well, and on that last shot, like he's in a bad spot. 30 seconds is a, lo a lot of time. No. And, and so he's looking at the basket. He's looking at this route, this route, this route. 30 seconds is gone. That's mm. when people rush shots and make mistakes. Right. And that doesn't necessarily make it a good rule, but it is a rule. And right. in that situation, I, I agree with you. I think a marshal should have been on it and, and, done it but at the, at the same time next time i have a putt or something for the win i don't want to be called on it. <laughs> and i know his putt on 15 took i think upwards of 45 50 seconds um but yeah i mean either give us more time like 45 seconds 
to make the shot and then or be on the ball of you know choking people if yeah. they need I almost forgot too, Yuli, before you ask your the final question, real quick, we always uh, ask people too. We've got like Madden stats. Our uh, stats guy, Edwin Stats, absolutely kills the stats game. He puts together kind of these Madden stats. So everyone wants to get to your reaction of this. So I'll kind of run it down if you're not able to see it here. So here we go. Attributes, these are what you got. Scoring, you're at a 92. Power, you're at a 95. Uh, accuracy, you're at a 90. Scramble, you're at an 87. And putting, you're at an 87. Anything you feel needs to be higher? Anything you feel needs to be lower? Uh, yeah, I take a ton of bogeys. Oh, uh, so you think, your think, you think your scoring should be lower? No, I think my scrambling should be better. Oh! Or I, I need to work on that. Is that. Am I answering the question? Oh, so yeah, yeah. So I was saying, like, are there any... So these are just based off of your statistics. Okay, so I was okay. just saying, like, is there anything where you're like, Actually, I think my my putting should be 95, not – this yeah, is most, more like do you feel – not like I need to work on this. It's more like do you feel like this is a, a, accurate uh, where you're at? Yeah, yeah, I do. Um, my putting, uh, garbage right now. Um, oh. so. Dude, I'll say this. I don't know if there's anybody more accurate off the tee right now. <laughs> I, I think that that accuracy number is a little low. I've played with Ezra a few times this year. Might be skewed. He doesn't miss a line, bro. It seems like. Might be skewed a little bit. Yeah, maybe take a couple, like maybe like one of those little PowerPoints and drop it down and give them a little 91. Also, on the people, are giving me, people are giving me crap. I'm pretty sure you can say attributes or attributes. I think both are correct. Attributes. Am, am I wrong there? Attributes? It, I don't even know if that's a real thing. Is that is it not attributes and attributes? No, it's attributes. I thought it was like a potato potato. Oh, well, it, it can be okay. if that's what you mean. Yeah, I think there's. Uh, Wait, you're saying the what the word? I, I'm saying both words, but one means one versus the other. Yeah, oh. I think attributes. You like that's you giving something. You attribute, yeah. you attribute your success to this. Yes, and then attributes are like your <laughs> your good things. Okay. All right, you hit him with the final question here. All right, out of all the people on tour, who do you look at? And let's say it's a skill that they have and you're a little jealous of. Wow. Um, anybody with a forehand? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I mean, I would shoot. I would kill to have big germs forehand. Where are you Ooh, at on nice. the forehand game? Because we talked to your brother a little that's bit so, about this as well. Yeah, that's so bizarre. Two brothers. Okay, hear me out. Two brothers. Really good. <laughs> you should be throwing stuff when you're younger, playing catch, doing all that stuff, like baseball catch, football catch. What happened? Where is the forehand? <laughs> Where's the forehand game, man? Uh, yeah, uh, we grew up playing disc golf. Uh, <laughs> there you go. That was three, so I didn't – that's all I – learned i didn't i didn't play baseball i didn't play anything else and that was the only way i learned so oh wow you look like what, a baseball player what 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 is what is closer to being ready for a tournament a forehand or a tomahawk jake wolf a style forehand. a forehand all right yeah all right. no i can i can get i i should have gone forehand on 11. i was thinking about it i can't yeah. i can throw that pretty well the way is your shot i know but um <laughs> Yeah, I, I had done the backhand a couple times in practice and been fine with it, so I didn't really think about it. Um, but I also never been that far up there. So <laughs> it's so weird because when Isaac was on here, we were, we were talking about the same thing. We've also had like forehand dominant people on here as well. And it's like it, it, at a certain point, though, you start thinking, like, yeah, but Ezra's just getting really good at backhands. And you're never having to think, like, oh, is it a forehand here or a backhand? You're mm -hmm. always stepping. And I'm wondering, like, on certain courses, especially, that might be advantageous of where you just know it's a backhand and you're just, you know, you don't have to practice both. I don't know. Something to think about. But all right, brother. Well, um, shout out your sponsors. Shout out all your people that make it possible, your fans and everything to make it possible for you to tour and do do what you love. Great. Um, I would like to shout out my sponsors, Prodigy Discs, uh, Flight Factory, Discs, um, Diameter Apparel, uh, Dirty Birdie, um, Iron Whip Fitness, um, 
uh, Backstage Organics. Mm. Um, let's see. And, um, yeah, shout out to my uh, wife, who's uh, actually home right now. Um, she'll join me in Preserve. Um, and then uh, all my family back home. Uh, miss them a ton. Um, the Walton County Club, um, back in my home uh, hometown. Um, and, uh, yeah, just everybody who uh, supports me and uh, just lets me do what I like to do. And it's been great, and I love all the support. So, Heck, yeah, I will. Just looking at the chat, you got a whole bunch of people here that are listening that are that are hoping that we finally get to see that win. Uh, I know it's right there as well. Good luck and uh, have fun in Kayak Point and uh, safe travels, brother. Awesome. Yeah, Thank you. Sir. All right, man. Appreciate you, man.